perception. I wanted to thank the invitation from the Division on Inclusive Social Development of the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs, uh, the trust of the focal point of the family, and the opportunity to represent the International Federation for <coughs> Family Development. Well, I am here to share with you the exciting journey that uh, that civil society declaration has gone through these past years. And we want it to be the way to best prepare the 30th anniversary of the International Year of the Family in 2024. The declaration is meant to be an effective instrument to foster all the support possible among a broad spectrum of partners. The voices of the families that integrate the declaration, together with the substantial contributions from experts and the framework given by the proposed megatrends from the Secretary General are key to address the challenges of families worldwide. So I will try to articulate how we got here and where we want to go to this narrative of the past, present, future of the Declaration. Well, in the past, I would say that we had a splendid experience preparing the 20th anniversary with more than 258 signatories of the former civil society declaration. The impact of that civil society was crucial to set the objectives of the International Year of the Family and its follow-up process up until today. That is why in 2018, we put things in motion and began the preparations for the 30th anniversary. So a parenting declaration was presented at the Conference on Family, Child Wellbeing and Development at the end of uh, 2018. Children and parents, their first layer of protection, became the initial spark to elaborate on the role of the family and its members to achieve the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Moving on later on 2019, proved to be fundamental for the Civil Society Declaration. It began with various events covering the role of the family, members, and continued with the value of unpaid care and women's role in families and societies. At the end of that year, pre-pandemic, a grand finale was served, the London Summit. The summit was organized on the sidelines of my own, uh, my own Federation's World Congress and attended by the Doha International Family Institute, the European Large Family Association, the European Federation for Parents and Cares at Home, Haro's Platform Family Policies from Sweden, the Large Family Association of Hungary, and Generations United from the US. We definitely became like a family, and this group of transnational civil society organizations became the seed of all the synergies and great team effort that we see reflected today on those various claims contained in the declaration. Mostly during the pandemic, and after I guess 16 raise awareness events, mostly online, two expert group meetings, three focus groups, 18 Zoom meetings, 64 drafts, 23 experts' recommendations, and 15 points that we have landed on the most enriched and comprehensive civil society declaration on the family, I would say, ever. And today, that is, that is how I stand here today to share with you that we are going to kick off the preparations of the 30th anniversary of the International Year of the Family and present that enriched version of the civil society declaration to gather inputs from all the civil society organizations in the world. The chosen team theme for these observance could not be better to illustrate how the declaration is articulated according to the four megatrends, new technologies, urbanization and international migration, climate change, demographic shifts. I'm definitely gonna highlight urbanization and I'm glad to see Bahira presenting her paper on this topic. She was part of our, one of our focus groups and he marvelously moderated it. And for example, and just to share some of the sneak peeks of the declaration we will be presented next Tuesday. It makes reference to implementing family responsive urban spaces that are inclusive, safe, resilient, healthy, affordable, and sustainable 
in order to families to thrive. And there's definitely some picking up and elaboration from the already SDG 11. It is an honor to share a panel with Angela from UNHabitat, with whom we have organized many events since 2018. We have been following the urban agenda and decided to engage with the stakeholders to make urban areas inclusive and sustainable for families. That is how the Venice Declaration and the commitment to support families in the urban areas started. In 2019, more than with the region of Piaszko Pomorski from Poland representing their own good practices. And just to wrap up, allow me to ask you this question, what would the future look like? And for now, we're just following up on the UN resolution that invites relevant stakeholders as part of the preparations for the third anniversary of the International Year of the Family to support research and awareness raising activities at the national, regional, international level on the impact of technologies, demographic, urbanization, migration, and climate change trends on families in order to harness their positive effects and mitigate their negative impacts. I know that we still have a lot to work on, although we are committed to turn the 30th anniversary into this substantial and enriching discussion to bring the role of the family unit and policies towards social development into reality. This goal can only be done with an inclusive, transparent, and participatory process to create the momentum and share families' needs in this global arena to find solutions and inspire hope. See you next Tuesday, and thank you very much.